All righty, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. I hope you guys are um, doing well. And, um, you, know, I was, uh, you know, I want you guys to take a look at the cable here. Um, you know, the, the, the cable actually hit today. Uh, you know, on this rally back about the 618 retracement, also the previous, you know, previous low support was resistance. So I would say while we're below 134.20, the risk is lower. And, and one of the reasons why I feel that way is also because of the false breakout on the, on the daily chart. As you guys know, that, that break above the 135 level, I think is a risk for the, the cable. So just keep that in mind. Um, and, and also, we've had a really big bounce in equities. And I'm going to come back to this here in a second. But we've had this really big bounce in equities. Not the whole market. The Na Well, I guess you could even say the NASDAQ come off of its lows. Uh, you can see this. This is a intraday rally, right? I mean, the S&P's rallied uh, 67. That's 35 roughly handles. For why? Um, not too sure. But we came off of that support. But if we're just consolidating here, which I think we are, right? If we're just going to consolidate here for the next day or two. Um, and let's say we come off, what, what, uh, what stands to bounce? Well, I would be looking at the dollar Canadian, which is holding up very well. Despite the rally in equities, the dollar Canadian has not been selling off. So that's something to think about. The other one would be the dollar Mexican peso little uh, false breakdown here into the ascending wedge support, get a little, um, you know, butterfly bounce might take us back to, you know, one night or uh, 1990, 1995, somewhere in that neighborhood uh, as this is a descending wedge and that descending wedge could possibly break higher if we got back above, you know, like I said, 1995, maybe, maybe uh, 20, then we'd see a, a bullish break. Um, the Aussie is also trading pretty heavy. Surprisingly, again, as stocks have rallied, the Aussie has been unresponsive. Now, the Kiwis bounced back a little bit, not much, but it bounced back a little bit. Um, but the Aussie is trading pretty heavy. Now, speaking of the Kiwi, if you guys have, um, I have not been looking at, you know, Forex analytics, so you maybe missed the update. Uh, I believe this is a, you know, we're, we're coming out of a ascending wedge. I'm already bearish and short a little bit, not a lot, but that is also a head and shoulder pattern that's developing. So what does that say? That says below 70 cents, you have to be short. I think, you know, like an hourly close below there would be good. Maybe a four hour close below there. Cause now that would target um, roughly 69 cents. So that's a hundred pip drop, right? Now, I care a lot about the Kiwi because, yeah, I'm short a little bit of Kiwi. But what I'm really looking forward to adding to on a breakdown of the New Zealand dollar would be uh, to add to my Euro New Zealand longs, which are right here. And this would be, you know, more of a kind of a flag pattern, if you will. Something like that. I'm just kind of giving you guys a little bit of a you know brief, briefly of what I'm I'm thinking here. But uh, I, I really want to add to this one because I think this one has you know probably one of the best opportunities because I'd rather I'd rather spend more mental energy being long euros than long dollars. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather have a more aggressive position long euros while we're above 120 in the euro dollar. Um, being long the euro New Zealand, that is. Uh, or something else I was just going to cover really quick for you guys. Oh, um, oh, you know, uh, no, I already talked about the cable. Euro is not really doing anything. Although I would like to see the euro, I, I would actually like to see the euro break out of this triangle and come down before rallying. That's what I'd like to see personally. 
Um, that that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Doesn't mean that's going to happen. Um, but that's, that's, uh, what I'd be thinking. Uh, Amir asked about IWM. So you want to take a look at the Russell? Uh, yeah, we continue to hit highs. Uh, now this is the 127% extension of the post COVID move. So yeah, we're overbought on the daily charts. Um, you know, we are at that 261% extension. I, I mean, I don't know if I'd necessarily short it, but hell, if I was long, I'd be very careful here. Um, just cause you're overbought and you're at a pretty big fib confluence. Hold on one second. One last thing. And realistically, you can have a little bit more upside, but you know, still, I think you need to be really careful if you're long. And if you're, if you're short or if you want to be short, uh, just don't risk a lot and trade small because you're going counter trend. But, you know, I look at equities and they're still pretty strong. Some of the currency, some of the currencies are really suggesting that we're going to see a reversal here uh, in equities, but the it's been a long time since I've seen currencies actually driving moves in uh, in in um, you know the equity markets. It's 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 been more opposite of that. It's like the equity markets continue to drag higher, and it eventually will weigh on the dollar. Um, but today we're seeing a divergence between the dollar and equities, and the dollar is typically speaking, holding in really well, despite the strength of stocks. Okay. Uh, other than that, it's pretty quiet. Oh, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. Tomorrow we do have the Bank of Canada. So uh, be, because we have the Bank of Canada, I think the dollar Canadian, uh, even though I think it's going to bounce here, you know, it's bounce will probably be limited till we get past the BOC. But we are holding up pretty well in the, you know, we might have a double bottom and that double bottom could take us back to like 129 and change pre Bank of Canada uh, rate decision, even though we're not looking for anything in particular um, with the, the Bank of Canada, it still is, it, you know, can can create some volatility. So, and you might get some traders that are short dollars or long Canadian dollars pair back those positions ahead of the BOC tomorrow. All right, guys and gals, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, thank you so much for the support, as always. And, um, you know, it's been quite, kind of a quiet day overall, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. So um, take it easy. Have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow morning on the Face webinar. Thanks, everyone.